Shortly before Intel put the final nail in the nut coffin, they released a new redesign known as the Disk Edition, which fixed a few of the criticisms I harped on about in previous reviews. The premium aluminium chassis returned, the power supply shrunk right down, and apparently fan noise was reduced. And all this while introducing the most beautiful looking mini PC to date. And while I never got round to reviewing Intel's NUC 13 Pro Disk Edition, I'm stoked to be able to look at a variant of it in the flesh right now. I'm told Geekom's XT12 Pro Mini PC was created in cooperation with Intel, and what we have here is a similar mini PC with a different CPU. So apart from being sexy AF, how does it actually perform? I'll let you know right after this short message. Isas Partition Master Professional is a comprehensive storage partitioning app for your PC or server. Resize and extend partitions, clone OS drives, convert MBR to GPT, and even recover lost or broken partitions. Find out more in the video description. This is definitely the most premium feeling mini PC I've looked at with plenty of aluminium and the amount of plastic reduced mainly to just the top cover. The honeycomb airflow design on the sides and bottom looks great, and the mini is as solid as they come. I really do think this is the nicest looking mini PC I've ever come across. There, I said it. While the Intel NUC Disk Editions featured the 13th Gen i5 and i7 P series processors, this one houses the 14 core 20 thread i9 12900H with XE graphics. While Geekom's XT12 Pro has a premium design and industry leading 3 year warranty, it also comes with a premium price tag, and only one configuration available. The 32GB of memory and 1TB of storage combo comes in at US$699. In the box you'll find a manual, smallish 120W power supply, power cord, thank you card, monitor mount, screws and HDMI. Unsurprisingly, the XT12 Pro also comes with a very similar port selection as seen on the Disk Edition. Dual 10 gigabit USB 3 on the front, with one providing extra charging capability, an audio jack, and power button. On the back is the barrel jack power connector, dual USB 4 40 gigabit, dual HDMI 2.0, a USB 3 10 gigabit, USB 2, and Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN. It says on the website the USB 4 ports support power delivery, but when I plugged in my USB-C monitor, the mini didn't even turn on. The power delivery it refers to is output only, not input. As an example, this Geekom USB-C monitor can be powered by the mini. I also tested it with four displays at the same time, and yes, it works great. Geekom's latest mini comes with Windows 11 Pro. To skip the need to log in or create a Microsoft account during the initial setup, press Shift and F10 on your keyboard, and then click into the command window. Type OOBE backslash bypass NRO and hit enter. It'll restart and when you get back to the network connection, you can skip past it by checking I don't have internet. I did notice the default icon list has been changed on this mini, but apart from that, Windows looks to be untouched. But don't worry, I did scan for nasties and nothing came up. After that I tested Ubuntu and it worked fine off the USB drive for those wanting to use Linux instead. Alright then, let's have a look inside. Intel always made it pretty easy to open up their minis, and it's the same here. Four screws, and then pull off the bottom casing. Wow, that's cool. The M.2 drives connect with thermal pads to a copper plate which then dissipates the heat onto the bottom casing. Fancy. And interestingly, there's an SD card reader on the board, but you can't use it. I guess we've got a case of form over function. The unoccupied M.2 slot is a 2242 SATA if you want to add more storage. There's a Kingston Gen 4 NVMe drive, and Lexa DDR4 3200 memory is included. Alrighty then, so let's see where this i9-12900H fits in the mini PC performance stack. The XT12 Pro falls in line with a few of the other 13th gen high-end Intel minis for single core, and it's around the middle. The i7 NUC 13 Pro still remains king of the hill. In multi-core, the XT12 Pro is, again, around the middle. It's very close to Geekom's 13700H, and it matches that mini in video encoding, again, around the middle of the chart. The XT12 Pro is again in the middle of the chart for both the DX11 and DX12 graphics tests. 
I've mentioned many times before that AMD has a big lead in integrated graphics, while Intel's far superior QuickSync hardware decoding makes it the ideal choice for those using their Mini for video editing and multimedia. Geekom's thrown in a Kingston Gen 4 NVMe storage drive, but it's much closer to a maxed out Gen 3. The only thing pointing to Gen 4 is the 4000 megabytes a second sequential read speed. So it's far from the fastest Gen 4 drive tested. I did mention video editing is Intel's strong suit, and the X-T12 Pro is very capable at handling my 4K video project. Check out that low CPU usage. Gaming tests give a good look at the overall performance, how cooling holds up, maximum power draw and more, which is why I do them. Intel's XE graphics does okay for a few esports titles. I've done a video on XE graphics, testing popular games over the years, so if you're interested in that, I'll link it at the end. For an older AAA game like GTA 5, you'll get close to 60 FPS. One way you can play the latest games on this mini is using an eGPU and one of the USB 4 ports. Here I'm using my Razer Core X with an RTX 3070. This way I can get much better gaming performance even with a limited bandwidth provided. This mini is also a decent emulation box using the integrated graphics. You can play pretty much all of the Nintendo Wii U library and a decent amount of PS3 games especially if you drop the resolution to native 720p. I was hoping for an Intel NUC Visual BIOS, but no. This one is a standard Geekom BIOS, which means very few options are available. You can change the fan mode, and I tried performance over normal and didn't notice any difference or any better results. You can also change the G3 state but I don't see Wake on LAN as an option or any CPU tweaking options either. The XT12 Pro does pretty well at idle power draw and max power draw is lower since the power limit on this mini isn't maxed out. And just like the Intel NUC Pros before it, this mini reaches 100C and then thermal throttles when it's under load. It's a powerful CPU in a very compact design, so I didn't expect any miracles. I'm happy to report that noise levels have been reduced over previous efforts. This mini is very quiet at idle, and under load, well, it's hard to measure on this chart. Let me explain. If I use Cinebench as an example, the mini will sometimes quickly ramp up the fan to as high as 45 dBA when I start the benchmark, then suddenly drop it back to 35 dBA and just stay there for the rest of the benchmark. So I've put 35 as the max, as that's where it is nearly all the time. And yes, it's the same behavior with the performance fan mode. Overall, fan noise is low, but normal behavior in performance mode would be to go higher to combat thermal throttling and give you more performance. And you can't set a manual fan curve in the BIOS, so the lower noise profile is what you get. But just putting it out there, the fan does ramp up and down until it settles on a speed. And this can be annoying, Alright, so here's my conclusion on this one. Geekom's XT12 Pro is a beautifully designed mini which screams premium. It comes with an industry leading 3 year warranty. Same as Intel NUX when they were still around. A small 120 watt power supply is what I had been waiting for for a long time. Not many minis come with dual USB 4. Fan noise under load is very low on this mini, especially considering how compact it is and the CPU it's trying to cool. But while fan noise has been brought right down, the CPU also reaches 100C under load like it did with the Intel NUX. The BIOS is very restrictive with almost no options, 
Performance doesn't keep up with the latest top tier CPUs, so the price seems more premium on this one. Also, the fan could have had smoother curves since there's some ramping up and down during use. Although, I didn't find it to be too bad. Ultimately, I think the XT12 Pro suits people who previously bought Intel NUX for the reliability, long warranty and metal case designs. It looks amazing, has low fan noise and a nice feature set. Just don't expect top tier performance. Oh, and if you're interested in Geekom's AMD alternative, do check out the A7 right here. Cheers!